Throughout the ages, countless reports of unexplained and baffling discoveries have been reportedly made deep within the mines of Earth. Regardless of the type of mine, or indeed its depth, it seems that these peculiar stories continue to surface, and usually only by word of mouth. Often attached to these fascinating tales, you will find stories of these artifacts being seized, destroyed, or simply reburied. We are often confronted with an apparent cover-up, vast resources and manpower being harnessed to hide these facts from the world. The motives for choosing to conceal such artifacts from the world could indeed be endless. Though regardless of motive, we feel it is imperative that we continue to expose these stories to the Earth if we have compelling witnesses and unmistakable evidence of a cover-up. Deep beneath the city of Donetsk, within the Rostov region of Russia, a large foundation of sandstone can be found, something known as rock shield of Carboniferous Age. It is about 300 to 360 million years old and is lined with distributions of coking coals that are also of around the same age. Astonishingly, Mr. Kasatskin has discovered, upon the roof of this shaft of coal, an imprint of a chariot wheel, an imprint undoubtedly made before the rock had formed around it. He also discovered another imprint, a small distance further along the shaft. It must be noted that these imprints have remained buried deep within these seams of rock for many millions of years. If a scientific analysis could have been undertaken upon this artifact, it could have shaken our understandings of world history, just like so many other artifacts we have been made aware of, all but a few now stolen from the public domain. Upon realizing the implications of his discovery, Mr. Kasatskin, an extremely experienced foreman in ventilation and safety engineering, specializing in seismic prognosis, thankfully took several photographs of his miraculous and now concealed discovery before officially reporting it and requesting a scientific evaluation. When his boss notified the owners of the mine in the hopes of getting an analysis of the artifact with an attempt to preserve it, to his boss's surprise, they demanded he continued the work through the shaft so that it could be subsequently flooded, which is unfortunately what has occurred, making further exploration of the sites impossible. He stated that he's investigated further regarding the Western Mines history with the fellow miners there and was able to confirm the existence of the other print within that mine. It had been damaged by blast hole driving and was little mentioned, though it was indeed there. He was sometimes in this cut, he said, and got to take a good look at it. He says that he was surprised, but also somewhat afraid to admit that these objects are of artificial origin. We, on the other hand, are excited by such a premise and will keep you posted on any further developments regarding the mine. During excavations within the Kiziltepe district of southeastern Mardin in southeast Turkey, a marvelous, miraculous, and to this day unexplained artifact was discovered. A pure nugget of historical gold, ticking all the boxes of desirability when it comes to our research here at Mystery History. The wheel is by far the most important invention man has ever realized, and it is indeed recognized as such the world over. The official attested account for the origin of the wheel is given to the late aceramic Neolithic, between 9500 to 6500 BCE, and could be seen in conjunction with other technological advances as that which gave rise to the Early Bronze Age. The official kept academic record regarding the evolution of the wheel is largely accepted as follows. 4500 to 3300 BCE, Chalcolithic Era, invention of the potter's wheel. 3300 to 2200 BCE, Early Bronze Age. 2200 to 1550 BCE, Middle Bronze Age, invention of the spoked wheel and the chariot. When, on occasion, we are confronted with artifacts reluctantly accepted by these same academic fields of study as authentic, demonstrating through their existence that mainstream paradigm is to be vastly incorrect, we feel a mix of frustration and vindication. We also strongly feel that it is imperative we share such finds with one another to further all of our understandings regarding our past. To hopefully break the spell slowly cast over years of incorrect and largely incomplete information. According to the culture and tourism director of Marden, Davut Belikte, the car is like a copy of cars today. 
He also pointed out that the shape of this ancient toy resembles that of a tractor. Belicte revealed that strange toy dolls and whistles, also made of stone, were also found at the site. We believe that the whistles and dolls to be well over 5,000 to 6,000 years old, with the whistles still in working condition, he said. Along with these ancient figurines was also a mysterious stone tablet, inscribed with an ancient text. After extensive historical analysis, the writing on the 5-centimeter-long stone was deemed to be that of an ancient title deed. The content of the deed refers to a fruit garden and the fruit trees within, which are to be split between the three sons of the owner. Clearly, the behavior of people far more advanced than that of Stone Age people, a premise we are expected to believe is accurate. Belicte has confirmed that comprehensive information on the two finds will be provided soon. Is this little ancient toy car perhaps the earliest evidence of the wheel we will ever find? Or is it just the tip of an evidential iceberg of a secret far larger? In 1936, near Red Creek in London, Texas, something was found. It has become one of the most compelling pieces of evidence to suggest there is a lost history of Earth. Within a rock, Emma Han would notice a small piece of wood that appeared to be embedded. Finding this strange she picks up the object for a closer inspection. Not really knowing what it was, it is lucky she was curious enough about the embedded wood to take it home. Nearly a decade later, presumably after the artifact had sat in Max and Helen Han's household for many years, their son Max would spark an interest into what it could be. He breaks the rock apart, and to their amazement concealed within the stone was an ancient stone hammer. Now known as the London Hammer, the rock that once grew around it was claimed to have stopped growing around 400 million years ago, which could only mean the hammer would be even older. What if the maker of this hammer nearly half a billion years ago stole the design from an ancient artifact he found himself? Just how old can our history be? The metal of the hammerhead has been confirmed to consist of 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 0.74% sulfur. And since its discovery in the 1930s and its subsequent re-entry into the air, it has not rusted. Around 1983 the hammer was acquired by creationist Carly Barth, an active advocate of Paluxy River man tracks, and other alleged geologic anomalies, who began to call it the London Artifact. Many figures within the scientific and historical communities have strongly disagreed with the premise that the hammer be many hundreds of millions of years old, some even theorizing that the limestone in which it was discovered could have formed in just a few centuries in perfect conditions. The variation in dates put forward by creationist scientists regarding the matter has also just stoked the flames of debate, and indirectly aiding in the denial of the artifact being truly ancient. However, there are certain factors regarding this object, like so many others in this criteria, that cannot be explained by accepted academia. Firstly, it is unthinkable for the modern theory of evolution to include such artifacts, this gives the creationists a foothold, yet they lack the material to continue an argument back many millions of years. They are indeed opposite, yet both incorrect approaches. Thus, because of this, the most important features of the hammer are conveniently ignored frequently by both sides of the modern coin. For example, the handle of the hammer is not made of wood anymore, it is now made of coal. It was once made of wood, but through a natural and unrushed process, the wood has been transformed into coal. And whatever the reasons for these inconsistencies in reports, evidently the rock strata at the site are indeed Hensel Sand member of the Travis Formation, Lower Cretaceous, Upper Absham stage, considered to be approximately 110 to 115 million years old by conventional geologists. This is fact, so by default the hammer is older, regardless of ulterior motives for publicizing such artifacts, the truth they can tell, no matter how reluctant it may be to your worldview, shouldn't be ignored. However, the age of the rock formation may be relevant to authenticity, it is irrelevant to the fact that the hammer does indeed exist. And that these artifacts create a proposition for historical data we should be approaching with open minds, if we are to progress as a species. We have often explored the many curious tales of a particular ancient global catastrophe. The Great Flood. A global deluge featured in countless ancient accounts. Yet additionally, we have also recently explored the compelling evidential corroboration to these ancient claims, 
supportive geological and scientific evidence, which, intriguingly, support there indeed once being such a flood, one of biblical proportions. The geological data supporting the change in sea levels are deserts, once seabeds, submerged pyramids, ruins, and not to mention the tales of Atlantis. However, one area which is rarely, if ever mentioned in these same libraries of history, are the underground cities once built. All of them, found on nearly every continent, were each buried beneath the earth in such a way as to avoid the land itself. The largest of these, Derinkuyu, discovered by complete accident during a house renovation. It strongly suggests that many more may still be laying undiscovered, waiting to see light again, resting undisturbed in complete darkness for unknown millennia. Thousands of connected tunnels have already been found and explored all over Europe, thousands of miles of interlinking underground tunneling systems, all built as if those who created them found ground level either inhospitable or of a mortally perilous place to dwell, this for some unknown reason. Derinkuyu, as mentioned, a site we have explored in depth before, not only has curious multi-ton rolling door stoppers located at strategic locations, stones modern man is incapable of moving, but was also reportedly lit by a natural gas pocket they tapped, tunneled a pipe through the complex with holes positioned along which, set alight as if a London Victorian street, ingenious if true regardless of the genius that went into Derinkuyu itself. Alien corpses found within remains of the Hypogeum in Malta, it must be noted along with 7,000 other headless corpses, yet these complete bodies lay there alongside them. The oracle room within, just like the rumors of the natural light technology of Derinkuyu, also possessed, yet still possesses, its own extraordinary example of ancient high technology. With an altar stone in the oracle room placed in such a location, complemented by extraordinarily perfect architectural design, amplifies one's voice incredibly well and throughout the structure. Thousands of kilometers of groundwater flooded caveways have recently been found in Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, along with many other locations. Littered ancient ruins, remains, and inhabitations, once this flooding is dated, we believe it will push the currently held chronology of man, and indeed these groups age, back massively, a subject we will cover soon. However, these digressions merely scratch the surface of what we intend to explore further and indeed share with all of you. So any support in this quest is greatly appreciated. To help us out, check the description for links. Why did ancient man seemingly hide underground? Why did they make such gargantuan efforts to dig, design, and then seemingly live in these places long term? These are questions we find highly compelling.